Jesus, you are worthy of all praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory. You reign and you rule over all. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. The great, mighty King. Who shall we compare with you, O God? Among the children of men, among the sons of men, there is no comparison with your greatness. We worship you, Father. We worship, we exalt you, we magnify you. We honor you, Jehovah, you reign in all. You rule in all realms. It's an opportunity to come before you again today, O oh God. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy. Sons and daughters, wherever you have been from, just continue to invite your friends. Tell them we are online. This is our lunch hour fellowship. And it's a special broadcast. It is a special broadcast. It's going to be a blessing to everyone all over the world. Because what we're going to be sharing this afternoon is so powerful. But before then, we just want to take our time to begin to glorify God, to begin to magnify, to begin to and uh, lift him high for him alone is worthy of all praise in whatever situation jesus is still god he still reigns he rules his power cannot be contested no power here on earth or in heaven can stand him he is the very author of life the bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith Wherever you are, just connect with the Spirit of God. I feel a strange anointing of God just about the time I went online. As soon as I came live, I felt the presence of the Almighty God here. And the same presence of God, I'm telling you sincerely, the same presence of God is coming your way, is coming to your house, to your houses, wherever you have been from. Just endeavor the soldiers that are on ground begin to share this video begin to share it we're gonna come we're gonna start shortly what the Spirit of God has laid in my heart for us to share this afternoon and it's this teaching is gonna continue throughout this week it's gonna be a blessing it's gonna be an eye-opener it's gonna liberate a lot of people It's gonna bring salvation it's going to bring healing. It's going to bring comfort. It's going to bring restoration. And it's going to bring glory to God. Because what we want to talk about is it has to do with your life and your eternity. It is very, very rare in many places. They don't talk about it. They don't speak about it because it's not popular. But the Lord has laid it upon our hearts to share it. Uh, because without it, your Christianity is vain. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you. Nothing must be done carnally. Nothing must be done in the flesh. Nothing must be done carnally. Father, we believe your spirit is going to help us this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus we speak the glory of God upon the nations of the world we speak mercy just please continue as soon as we hit about 50 or thereabout I think I, I, I'll be good to go continue to invite continue to invite your friends your relatives tell them it's lunch our fellowship 
for us to share together in order for us to be connected to the spirit of god the spirit of god is everywhere his presence is here and you can also connect with me now Yes, Jesus. Reba Kasa. Rata Karo Toko Senteria Ninara. Ea Dolando Okonsi. Say Tilama Arkondo Minawara Ashenda. Wejala Tabira Daga. Wejara Tabela Daga. Wejara Tabela Daga. El Alkentaka Suntoria Mina Lahawa. Make sure you connect to the Spirit of God. El Afasan Sa Shakula Alkem de Niminara. Majula Lay Taukun Shatra Alinda was Shanda Laminara. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. You are welcome. Nakato Shadera Baba Baba Sharada Baba Kerabada Sarabada Kerabada Narabada Elatorabada Neratu Shenda La Kiriabada Oh thank you Jesus We shallan to Korea mina lahuaza Brethren as soon as you feel the presence of God where you are please don't be busy doing whatever make sure you concentrate I'm telling you, the presence of God is here. The presence of God is here. His, 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 his presence is here. I can feel it practically. As soon as you also connect with me and we are, we are sharing together, you will feel the presence of God also. But make sure not to distract you. Make sure you are not distracted. Online can be very, very deceptive at times. Make sure you are concentrating on what we're going to talk about. The presence of God, the presence of God is here, and we can transfer that presence of God wherever you are. If you are ready, just let me, Lord, just let me know, and please let me know where you have been from. Let me know where you have been from. As soon as you come online, type your name. Of course, your name appears, and let us know where you have been from, and let me know indeed if you also can feel the presence of God. He is our Father. He is the same source. The same source of power, the same source of anointing, the same source of glory. You feel the presence of God, just let me know. His glory is here. As soon as I came online, it, it was a sieve, a gun, it was a sieve. I just came inside a cooler, inside a deep freezer. And that presence is still here now. Brethren, that is just the truth. The glory of God. Is going to touch you wherever you are. Distance cannot be a barrier. Latala baku shandalia, warkora ba shandali ili afansa sakuri adire anda hasada. Najula demina rabu shenderiara. Thank you, sweet spirit of the living God. We are taken from your bower. We are taken from your heart this afternoon, and we want to share with the nations of the world. We want to share with the inhabitants of the earth. In this period of chaos, brethren, I still feel his presence. His presence running from the crown of my head right to the toe, to my toe. His presence is tangible here. And the same presence I release unto you. The spirit of God, let it come over you. Just receive the embrace of the Lord now. Receive the embrace of the Lord. His embrace is very suited. Oh, how I long for the return of the King of Glory. How I long for the return of the King of Glory. His return we put an end to every instability. We will be with him forever. What a glory. What a glory. This is what we want to share this afternoon. It's going to be like a Bible study. But it's going to be filled with the anointing of God. With the power of God. Wakatala barandori amin al 
is it's going to be Bible study, but it's going to be full with anointing, with the healing power of God, with revelation of the Holy Spirit. Continue to share the video. Let the sons and daughters of GKC worldwide, let them be aware. We are online already. Please, as soon as you come online, let us know where you have been from. This is our launch hour fellowship. Yes, it's launch, launch hour fellowship. We are here in the United Arab Emirates. By the grace of God, by the grace of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not bound. In as much as we are still on our feet, we still have our breath in us. The gospel of Jesus will still go to the ends of the world. Because that is what people need now. That is what humanity needs. That is what humanity needs. We don't need, we don't need fear. We don't need negativity. But we find solace in the word of God. And that is the word we are bringing your path this afternoon. And it's going to be healing to you. It's going to bring restoration to your family. It's going to bring hope to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Continue to share. As soon as we are 50, I'm coming. I'm, I'm starting right away. Share. Just continue to share. Walada Dabaka Sataria. The keyboardist is doing excellently. Walaha Sakara Dababa. Na de Geria Barando Romo Shanda Ladagea. Yes, Holy Spirit of God. O Kashandara. Bekeriado, Sabariado, Makeriado, Nasuriado, Eletenteliado. Waro she came alada da bahasanda. In the name of Jesus, continue to share this. Twenty six already. Twenty six. When we are fifty, we are going to start what we are sharing, what we have in stock this afternoon. It's going to bring healing to you. It's going to bring restoration. It's going to bring assurance. In the name of Jesus. Watala be korata, watala be korasanda laba. Yes, Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Thank you, Father. All ataka konra dabi. As many of you online, I thank God for your lives. I give God the glory for your lives. It is just a time for us to share together, to connect with the anointed, to connect with the Spirit of the Living God, and to receive His blessing. His blessing is here. Badaga Shandarabaka Boratalia Dege Kingdom Impact Network team. You're doing excellent work. I appreciate every one of you. And all the sons and daughters of GKC, I appreciate you. Continue to share this video. Just continue to share. Tell your friend about it. It is time for us to come online. We are online live already. We are, we are, we are, we are online. Hallelujah. I may not be able to mention your names, all of you, but just make sure you are connected with me, with the Spirit of the Living God. We are 39 already. We are 39. Wherever you have been from, let us know your location and just connect with the Spirit of God. Please, within the time we're going to have, I will not want you to be distracted. Online church could be very deceptive at times if you are not very concentrated. If you are not very focused, it could, you could be very distracted. But please, just connect with the Spirit of God in order for you to be able to, to receive what the Bible says. You must be in the Spirit to connect with the Spirit of God. If you are not in the Spirit, there's no how you can get the blessing of God. Hear what the Bible says in the book of... Uh, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, it says, After this I looked and behold a door. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After these I looked and behold a door was open in heaven. A door was open in heaven. 
And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Things which must be hereafter. Things which must be hereafter. There are a lot of things that is going to begin to unveil all around the world. There are things that must shortly come after. Please let nobody deceive you. Yeah, it seems the whole world is locked down. It seems activities and movements have been restricted. But it is just a warning. It is a warning. It is to let you know that something is about to happen that is going to shake the whole world. I'm not instilling fear into you. But as a matter of fact, you're right. If you call it fear, I'm instilling the fear of God into you. Instead of the fear of coronavirus. I want the fear of God to enter into your spirit, man. If the fear of God enter into you, that is, that is more beautiful than the fear of coronavirus. The fear of God, let it be what is ruling your life. If the fear of God is in you, it will teach you what to touch. It will teach you what not to touch. It will teach you who to associate with. Just as coronavirus is teaching a lot of people who to associate with, where to go, where not to go, the kind of gathering they should belong to. It is the, the fear of God as it relates to the second coming of Jesus Christ. We teach you the fear of God. Coronavirus is teaching a lot of people to keep hygiene. A lot of people have been hygienic now. They go everywhere with hand cleanser, sanitizer. Is your heart clean? Is your spirit man pure? Your hand is nothing. Your body is nothing. Is your heart pure? Is your heart ready? Are you ready for the rapture? Now, let me tell you, a lot of people talk about rapture, about rapture, rapture. What do you actually understand by rapture? What do we mean by rapture? If you open your Bible from Revelation, I mean from Genesis to Revelation, you never get a place, you never hear, you never see that word rapture in the Bible. You never see the word rapture in the Bible. It's just theological term to explain as a matter of fact it is a, a, a Latin word that is called rapio or rapio so the English translation or whatever is a rapture what is actually the meaning let's go to the Bible from the book of uh, first Thessalonians chapter 4 first Thessalonians chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 15 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 15, 16, and 17. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with this word. Now, you saw the word there. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Now, that same word rapture is what we refer to. That same word caught up is the word we refer to as rapture. 
I said before, the world is about to witness an event that is going to shake the whole of the human race. It's going to shake everyone to, it's going to shake nations to their very foundation. The rapture we are talking about is an event that is happening very soon. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. And in, in, in my spirit, I guess this is just about the best time for us to talk about this event in order for you as a child of God to be prepared. And for those who are not even born again to be prepared, just as both non-believers non and believers are, are afraid as it were, and all of them are keeping hygiene. You can't even shake your friends. You can't embrace your friends. Your movements are being restricted. The same way an event is happening, it's going to happen shortly. A lot of people will be shocked. A lot of people will be surprised. It will catch some people unawares. But with, so for some people, it will not catch them unawares because this is why we are coming your way to let you know that it's going to happen very soon. God has never left the human race in darkness. I see a lot of people talking about uh, coronavirus, uh, about uh, these, you, uh, you, you restrict your movement, uh, don't associate with too many people, uh, you know. But all those things are very good. If that is how we've been keeping the word of God in our heart, if that is how you've been sanitizing your heart, which the Bible says, that is where the seat of darkness is. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it except God? The wickedness that is in the heart of man, how can man take care of it? The sin and the iniquity that is in the heart of man, how can man, how will man take care of it? The only way of escape is through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus is the only way out. Now, going back to what we are talking about, today is just going to be an introduction. By the time I come your way tomorrow, we're just going to continue to expound it. And I'm going to begin to tell you what you have to do. Just as the government of the world, they have told you and instructed you on what to do in order for you not to be infected or not for you to be infested by a coronavirus. Throughout this week, I'll begin to teach you by the grace of God. I'll begin to open your spiritual understanding what you have to do. To keep you fit when the rapture takes place in order for you to be able to make it to heaven. We all will not remain in this world forever. We are not going to stay here forever. The wickedness of man must be brought to a stop. And that is what God is going to do. God is going to tell man that they are not the owner of this world. It doesn't really matter the, 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 the scientific di discovery. It doesn't really matter what the world has turned to. I mean, the amazing discoveries and the inventions of man, the owner of the world is going to take over this world very soon. So, listen to what this account says. This is the best text on the, on, on the subject rapture. Of course, we have it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 also. You read it from verse 1 to, to, to verse 58. It talks about the mystery of rapture. What is going to happen when the rapture takes place. So, listen brethren. Today, I'm introducing you to it. I'm introducing you to the lecture or to the teaching on rapture. A lot of ministries don't teach this. They don't teach this. People don't teach this any longer. What you hear from everywhere is prosperity. As if we are going to remain in this world forever. After you have amassed wealth, after you have amassed riches, after you have built all the mansions and you drive the best car, brother, something is still going to happen. You are not going to stay here forever. And this is what I want you to understand. If you understand this and you know it is going to help you, just as it is helping a lot of people around the world now, nations of the world, they've closed their borders. People are not coming in. People are not going out. It is all very beautiful. Those are just the precautionary measures to tame the spread of coronavirus, which is laudable. It is commendable. But what are we doing to prepare ourselves 
for the second coming of the King of Glory. Jesus himself will come. But let me tell you, when we talk of rapture, it is actual, actually in two phases. The first phase is going to be a shock to all the nations of the world. The Bible says it's going to be like a thief in the night. It's not, it's not going to be announced. It is the after effect that a lot of people will know. It is after the event must have taken place. That is when everybody will get to know. CNN will begin to announce it. We begin to broadcast it. Oh, something has taken place. Oh, a lot of people have disappeared. Oh, maybe plane crash. Or maybe the pilot is born again and his spirit filled is washed in the blood of Jesus. A lot of people will disappear all over the world simultaneously. At the same time, that is what we call rapture. In China, in America, in Africa, in, 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 in Nigeria, in Uganda, in Kenya, in United Arab Emirates, in Iran, all over the world, the rapture will take place simultaneously. In some part of the world, they may be sleeping. In some places, they may be in their marketplaces. In some places, that is why Jesus Christ says, two may be walking on the way. And suddenly, one will be taken. The taking away of the saints is what we call the rapture. The taking away of the saint is what we call the rapture. Now, if you are not prepared for it, it will be most disastrous. And this is why I'm encouraging everyone. This is a time for every one of us to reflect. Continue to share this, please. As soon as you come online, make sure you don't just watch alone. Continue to share the video. A lot of people wants to know about what is happening. They want consolation. They want to be comforted. This is the time for the world to know that whatever is happening is just a warning. It is a warning. I'm not telling you Jesus Christ is going to come next week. I'm not telling Jesus is going to come tomorrow. I'm not telling Jesus is going to come 2025. I'm not telling he's going to come 2070. But I'm telling you. It's what is sure. The Bible tells us the word of God can never go. There is no verse of the Bible that is permitted to, to, to go away without being fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled. How many people are preparing for rapture in churches? How many people are conscious of their spirit life or their spiritual life? Because when the rapture takes place, it, is, it has to do with your connectivity with the Spirit of God. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, there is no how you'll be qualified for the rapture. If you are not washed with the blood of Jesus Christ and you are not living a holy life, there is no how you will qualify for rapture. So the first premise, the first place is for you, is for your sins to be washed. That is the beginning. When your sins are washed away and your sins is cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, now you start a life in Christ, a spirit, a, the, the journey of, 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 of faith. So when you start that journey, it, you are, the journey, you are not starting the journey with your body, although your body is given to you to live in this part of God's creation. It is very good, but I tell you, brother, your spirit man is most important to God. So the rapture is coming for your spirit. It is the connectivity that will make you to be rapturable. The connectivity with the spirit of God. If you are not connected to the spirit of God, there is no how you are going to be raptured. Now, hear what the Bible says. A lot of people don't know. Maybe you have your relatives who have died and they are Christians. They've given their lives to Jesus. They were born again before they died. That is what the Bible says in that Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hear what it says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It said, those who are dead, those who are dead, those who are dead. Now, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. Okay, let me read verse 15 actually. He said, For this 
we say unto you by the word of the Lord it is not my word it's the word of the Lord we say this unto you by the word of the Lord now what did it say that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep now in the Bible the word asleep is being used for Christians Christians don't actually die we don't die we only sleep temporarily and we're gonna be woken up at the rapture when the trumpet will sound the Bible says an archangel is gonna blast the trumpet the natural man will not hear it because it's a celestial event. Those who are combat with the activities of this world, they will not hear it. Their spiritual ears are deafened. They will not hear the rapture. They will not hear the trumpet. The Bible says when the archangel, the archangel will blow the trumpet, it is those who are alive whose sins have been washed with the blood of Jesus. They are the one that will hear it. So the Bible says, but even at that, those who are already dead, it doesn't really matter the kind of death. It doesn't matter whether they died through plane crash or they died in the, in the sea or they died and their body was never recovered. It doesn't really matter the kind of death. But the Bible says, they will be the people that will first hear the rapture. It is a mystery. It's, it is what the people of the world are supposed to know. Those who are already dead, they are born again. Your great-grandfather, he gave his life to Jesus Christ when he was alive. He will hear the rapture. He will, he will be in the sky. He will hear. The grave, his grave will open up. The, the, the cemeteries will open up. The seas will give up the dead in them. It will happen by the power of God. Brethren, you don't joke with the power of God. The same power that made the heaven and the earth. The same power that knows how the womb of a woman can conceive a seed and the, 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 the child begins to grow in that womb, the same power of God. It's a mystery as a matter of fact. That is why Apostle Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, let, let's, let's go to that account. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Don't forget we said, those who are dead, we rise first. So the, the Bible is not saying dead, but it said those who are asleep in Christ, how many people slept since though since the time of creation those whose account were right with god those who led holy and righteous life from all generation they are going to rise up first and the bible says those of us as many people will still be alive at the rapture at the second coming of jesus christ these are the people who will join with those who have already been resurrected from their graves meaning that all the cemeteries all over the world the cemetery in your country they will blast open and the saints in them will rise up don't forget jesus christ is our first example of resurrection from the dead the bible call him the first begotten among the dead so jesus christ resurrected from the dead that is to let you know that you and I, your great father, your great grandparent, your brother who died in Jesus on his sick bed, he gave his life to Jesus before he died, he will resurrect. That resurrection, the first resurrection is not for everybody. The Bible makes us to know that these are the things I'm going to begin to teach you as we continue in this teaching. But those who are going to partake of the first resurrection, they are the believers, the saints those who give their lives to jesus it doesn't matter the kind of life they led oh she was a prostitute before she died and she gave her life to jesus christ she will resurrect oh nobody even knew that she was born again but right on her sick bed she gave her life to jesus she said jesus christ please forgive me the sins i've committed please have mercy upon me she will be resurrected and that is why the resurrection that the, the it's going to be full of surprises because there are people who will make it at rapture that will beat a lot of people's understanding because God is the owner of the souls of men and he is the one who knows who actually gave their life to him right at the very last. Then, In other words, the last second of your earthly existence matters the most. Maybe somebody is on the sickbed now and the doctor says you may not survive it. 
I'm encouraging you, wherever you are watching from, it's important for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Just surrender your life to him. Tell him, Jesus, I'm surrendering my life to you. I've disappointed you though, but I'm asking for your mercy. I want you to forgive me. If you do that, genuinely from your heart, if you close your eyes, when you close your eyes, you open your eyes on the other side with your Savior, the one who loved you and who saved you. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you see, salvation is what is going to qualify you to be part of the rapture. Now, let me just make this distinction between the event that is going to happen at rapture. So the first event that is going to happen is this. The dead in Christ will rise. Those who are still alive, who are washed by the blood of Jesus, they will also rise up. They will, be, they will resurrect. And the Bible says in verse Let's go to back to that uh, Thessalonian, the book of Thessalon First Thessalonian. I told you we're going to do is like a Bible study, but this Bible study is powerful. So in that First Thessalonian chapter 4, it says in verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. For those who are born again in this generation, maybe the last five years or last ten years, I don't know if you have ever been taught about this event. It's going to happen. Believe it. It must happen. It will happen. Because God says it. And God is not a man to lie. What God has said, he will do it. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the one that has gone out of the mouth of God will not return unto God void. Don't let anybody deceive you with the message of materialism. It is good for you to be comfortable in this world, but we're not going to stay in this world forever. So it is important for you to begin to prepare your spirit, man. It's going to happen just like that now let me tell you how the rapture is going to take place i don't know the day i don't know the date i don't know the time but this is how it's going to happen it's going to be sudden and the saints are taking up it's just going to happen just like that instantly the angel will blast the trumpet those who are born again who are alive they will hear it. Those who, are, who were born again before they died, they will also hear it. So the Bible says it is the dead that will rise first. The dead in Christ, I mean. If a witch or a wizard, a satanic person, someone who never gave his life to Jesus Christ, he died, he will not, he will not resurrect at that time. He will still remain in his grave. He will wait for the second, uh, uh, second, uh, how do I call it now? Uh, is it the second rapture now? No, no, it's not going to be rapture, but it's just going to be the second resurrection. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's going to be the second resurrection. Now, there is the first resurrection. It is on, The first resurrection is only for believers who died in Christ, whose sins were washed away, and whose names are written in the book of life. They are the one who will rise first, and those who rise first they are the one who partakes of the rapture. That is what the, that Thessalonian call catching up. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. So, the Bible says in that verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. Meaning that nobody's going to disturb anybody. Now, at this time, Jesus Christ is not coming physically. Jesus will be in the sky. To welcome all the saints. And it will usher us into a celebration. Are, are you still with me? Now, that is going to last for another three and a half years. Let me share this with you. The first three and a half years after the rapture. Is for the saints. 
Don't forget the, 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 those who died in Jesus Christ. They have resurrected and uh, their cemetery, their grave has been opened. The blood of Jesus has washed them and qualified them to partake of that first resurrection. The saints who are still alive, maybe the saint who is alive is a pilot or is a driver or is in the mall, is the one that the, 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 the cashier or whatever he's doing is born again. As soon as the rapture takes place, it will disappear. So you see, just as it is now, look at what is happening in the nations of the world. Just the law and the decree or the, 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 the statement from the president or the head of state or the king will just tell people nobody goes out and the, 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 the instruction or the, the law is so effective. That is exactly what will begin to happen. The world will begin to pick news, events that has happened. People who are not prepared, they, they are left behind. And that is when the reign of Antichrist will begin. That is when tribulation will begin. The, the church of Jesus Christ will, not be, will never be part of it. Because Jesus will never allow his only ones to see corruption. He will not allow them to partake of that tribulation. Although before Jesus comes, just this is the tribulation that we are passing through gradually now. I want you to understand that. It, what is happening in the area of COVID is going to continue. Even after COVID, we have gotten the vaccine or whatever, the solution for COVID, all that things will begin to happen. There will be, there will be wars in nation. There will be pestilences in nation. There will be uh, 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 climate change is rocking the world at the moment. You know, in East Africa, uh, grasshopper has invest, in, in, invaded the land and eaten up the proceeds of the land. There will be, uh, you know, food shortages around the world. There will be epidemics around the world. There will be earthquake around the world. You see, see, we tsunamis. You have heard about tsunami. Tsunamis will begin. We continue. It will continue. These are the events that will precede the rapture. But the question I want to ask is. How many people are taking note, notice of all these things? How many people are vigilant? How many people are being instructed by the event that is taking place? Only few people. What a lot of people are particular about now is how to stock their houses with food, which is okay. But when rapture takes place, you will not even be able to buy. You will not be able to sell until you have the mark of the beast. I'm, I'm, today is just introduction. I'm just introducing you to the event that is going to shake the world to its foundation. The event that a lot of the event that is going to happen, but a lot of people are not prepared. How careless will you be? For instance, you know you're going to get married, and you are not prepared for your wedding. How careless will you be? You are expecting your baby. You are not prepared for the baby. You see, there are a lot of preparation around the world. People are preparing for graduation. People are preparing for their wedding. People are preparing for, uh, uh, for what, whatever it is that is good that is happening, that's going to happen to them. A lot of people are preparing, but nobody is preparing for the rapture. And the Lord wants me. The Lord wants me to go online to begin to tell people, as many people that will hear this, tell your friends, tell your relatives, Share the videos with them. Events that we continue to shake the world is happening gradually. Now, this COVID-19 is one very clear one that the Lord is giving to the world for you to know. How can airlines be shut down? Has it happened before? Yeah, it happened in 1804 or thereabout, but it's not as, as severe as it is now. It's not as firm as it is now. Because then it was not meant to be the reign of the Antichrist. The stage is set now for the Antichrist. It is easy. That is why the regrouping around the world. You see, we have what we call African Union. And African Union, they are also imagining in West Africa, there is an introduction of a singular currency. In Europe, the old European country, they've, they've matched together and they have a currency which we call euro all these things are the preparation 
they are the event that is gradually preparing the world for the reign of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will come. As a matter of fact, the Antichrist is here because his mark is here already. We call it the mark of the beast. Don't, don't worry. Throughout this week, we're going to open the Bible, but just the introduction is what I'm giving you today. Tomorrow, we will continue further to let you know. And don't forget, whatever is happening now, there are biblical prophecies. Let's go to the book of Matthew. If there is anybody for you to believe, you may not believe any pastor. When a pastor talks to you, you don't believe him. But when you hear what Jesus Christ says, you had better believe and you had better be prepared. In Matthew chapter 24, the Bible says from verse 1, hear what it says. Matthew 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Matthew 24, I'm reading from verse 1. And Jesus went out, departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Brethren, there are a lot of prophecies that have been fulfilled ever since Jesus left this world. And those prophecies are still being fulfilled. And it will continue to be fulfilled. Yet the world is not prepared. What a lot of people are concerned about now is COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19 COVID everywhere. That is the word in their mouth. Nobody is talking about rapture. Nobody is talking about that. This is a warning. Instead, even in some of the places now, they are talking about prosperity. Of what use is your wealth without Jesus? With your wealth and your money amassed in the, in the, in the banks, even when, oh my God, it is more terrible, it's going to be more terrible than COVID. Because by then, the church of Jesus Christ must have been raptured. Because as it were, the church of Jesus Christ is the, is, the, is the force that is still maintaining peace here. For instance, we've been praying against COVID. We've been praying for the healing of the people. We've been praying for you know, uh, recovery uh, in the nations of the world. But when rapture takes place, nobody is praying any longer. Nobody will be available. Kalabosha, Leikea, Karabo, Shandala. Nobody... I mean, born again children of God. There are people who are, who are born again that may not make it at rapture. <laughs> I'm not talking of that, of that now. But I'm talking of that first event. The first event that will happen. It, CNN and all the media houses, they will broadcast. They will, te they will televise. They will, they will pick news until they get weary. Jesus Christ said, and as he sat upon Mount of Olive, his disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, where shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of your coming? Can you see that? The disciples came to him and said, What shall be the signs of your coming? And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. Some people will come, they say, Jesus is coming in the year 2025. It's a lie. Nobody knows the time. Nobody knows the hour. But the event will take place. The event must take place. Because that God has determined it, God has proposed it, it must take place. So Jesus warned beforehand, he said, don't let anybody deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We have seen it happen around the world. A lot of people are coming, they call themselves Jesus. It's a lie. There is just one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There cannot be two of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is one. He is the Savior of the whole world. We call him our Messiah, Yeshua, our Messiah. 
He is the Son of God, the one that was born by Mary. By his, his birth was by Virgin Mary. We have just one Savior. We have one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Jesus won before time. He says, some people will come and they will tell the world, but he had already won his disciple. So I'm shocked a lot of people have been deceived around the world. Some people will come and say they are Jesus and a lot of people are following them. What a confusion. So Jesus says, he says, take it, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Jesus says, take it that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. He says in verse 6, now listen to this. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the hand is not yet. Are you listening to me? Now, Jesus Christ said this over 2,000 years ago. I mean over 2,000 years ago. A lot of wars have come and gone. The world is still in war. Now, Jesus warned before time. He says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars in many places. He says, all this must come to pass. He says in verse 7, for nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famine. There shall be pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, pestilences. COVID-19 is one of such prophesied pestilences. COVID-19. The other time it was Ebola. The other time it was a bird flu. Now it's COVID. You will hear of pestilences. After COVID, other things will still happen because they are just prophetic utterances before, I mean, Jesus Christ left. They are the things that we precede is coming. Nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. There shall be famine. How many people are dying of famine around the world? Food shortage around the world. In some places, no water, no, no portable water. The Bible says this will continue. It will continue. Because they are the things that precede the coming of Jesus Christ. And hear what it says again. All these are the beginning of sorrows. How many people are warning the world that these are the beginning of sorrows? No government of nation has the solution. The only antidote is you giving your life to Jesus. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Let him forgive you from, of your sins. Let him write your name in the book of life. Let your, when your name is written in the book of life, then you are saved. Even at that, there is a need for you to work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. Yesterday night, I was sharing yesterday on the need for people not to take the grace of God for granted. A lot of people talk about grace and eventually they've walked themselves into disgrace. The grace of God has a message that is preaching. If you are there, you are watching me and you've received message about grace, that the grace of God will cover you. Even though you are committing sin, that the grace of God will cover, it's a lie. It's a lie of the devil. It is a doctrine of demon. God cannot make a law and by himself he violates his law. I believe in grace, that the grace of God is what brought salvation unto every one of us. But that grace has a message. That grace has a message. Go with me to Titus chapter 2. Hear the message that grace is preaching. I call it the message of grace. So that those people who are deceiving a lot of people around the world, you, you will not be deceived. You are born again and there's a message on grace that is telling you that you can, you can drink alcohol, you can commit fornication, that God will forgive you. It's a lie. Some people even thought that even if you committed fornication 
and you die and you never confess the sin of fornication that you will, you will, have, you will go to heaven is a lie. Is a lie from the pit of hell. Hear what the Bible says. Titus chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1, 11. Grace places responsibility on you as a child of God to walk yourself in holiness and in righteousness. If you, have, if you don't understand the message of holiness before rapture takes place and you are not holy, the holiness I'm talking about is righteousness through Jesus Christ, which every one of us know. No one of us qualifies by our own righteousness to enter heaven. But listen to what the Bible says. This is the message of grace. And I, how I wish this message of grace is sent around the world so that people will see. I call it the message of grace. This is what grace is talking about. Now, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation had appeared unto all, all men. You are born again. You are not born again. The grace is available. When you are ready for Jesus Christ, the grace comes and you are, you are born again. You are accepted into, into the belong. Now, it says, The grace of God that brings salvation had appeared unto all men. Now, verse 12 says, Teaching us. This grace is teaching. This grace has a message. Teaching us to deny godliness, God, uh, to deny ungodliness. Number one, anything that stands for ungodliness, you must deny it. Denying ungodliness, number one, and worldly lust. What do we call worldly lust? The lust for the things of the world. Insatiable crave. That is the meaning of lust. It could be lust for sex. Lust for material thing. Lust for alcohol. That is exactly what he's talking about here. He says, worldly lust. It, it, the grace of God is, de is teaching you to deny worldly lust. Worldly lust. Lust after materialism. Acquisition of material things in this world. I pity some people who are living here on earth as if they are not going to leave this place. The grace of God is teaching you, number one, denying ungodly lust, number one. Then, what? I'm sorry, uh, denying ungodliness, number two, worldly lust, number two, number three. You must live so badly. You must not be loose with your spiritual life. You must be sober. Soberness of the spirit is what is going to qualify you for rapture. If you are too, too loose, the rapture takes place, you will, not be, you will not be able to partake of the rapture. What do I mean by you being, if you are not sober, sobriety from the word sobriety, to, you know, it is self-control. You are not carried away. Somebody wants to introduce you to things that is not godly. You are not carried away. It could be money. It could be fame. It could be wealth. No, it could be power. But you are not carried away. You are sober. It is the soberness that will qualify you for heaven. And don't forget, God is not your pastor. He's not your, the general overseer of your ministry. God is God. He's the one that will know how many people will partake in the rapture. By his mercy, he's the one that will build that spiritual force in every man that will qualify you to for the rapture. So, hear what the, the message of grace now. It says, teaching you to deny worldly, I mean, ungodliness, worldly loss. You must live soberly. You must live righteously. You must live godly in this present world. It breaks my heart that many believers don't know this because the doctrine of the devil has entered into the church. The messages people hear from the pulpit is prophecy concerning prosperity, prophecy concerning money in their bank account, prophecy concerning uh, the new car you want to buy, the new house you want to buy, no prophecy concerning godliness. 
No prophecy concerning self-control. No wonder. The Bible says they want to hear. I will give them. I will let them have teachers. Teachers that will teach them the things they want to hear. They, a lot of people come online. All they are talking about is I want to prophesy. I want to prophesy wealth into your life. Wealth without Jesus. Wealth without preparation for rapture is useless. Can you see the message of grace? I'm still coming back to rapture. So for those people who teach about grace, they tell you that there is a certain level of grace you get to, that when you commit sin, that the grace will cover it is a lie. It's demons speaking through them. There is nothing like that. The Bible says, the foundation of God stands sure. It has a seal. God, not your pastor. God knows those who serve him. <laughs> God knows, no matter how eloquent the person may be, let him tell you that he has grace, that that grace will cover him, even if he commits sin, he dupes people, he sleeps around, and that the grace will cover him. He's a lie. There is nothing like that. Grace of God is teaching you godliness. Grace of God is teaching you righteousness. Now, if you still live in those lives, in that kind of life, then tell me, what has the blood of Jesus Christ done for you? Or do you think we are joking about the fact that God is going to punish the sin of the world? Listen, let me tell you something. God is not willing that any man should perish, but that all will come to the knowledge of truth. That's what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3. But the devil is the one in charge of the world I fear now. The Bible calls him the prince of this world. From the time that Adam sinned, he willed the world to the devil. Now listen to me. That is why almost all the sectors of this world, the devil is controlling, is in control. Are you talking of fashion? Are you talking of media? Are you talking of uh, uh, businesses? Are you talking of entertainment? He has his men, his lieutenant, his, his, his human agent. In all of these sectors, they are the one that they, they are running the show for him. Behind the scene. So don't be deceived. The grace of God places responsibility upon you. The grace of God teaches you. You must deny ungodliness. You must deny worldly lust. The Bible says in that book of First John. First John chapter 2. Hear what the Bible says, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. I'm still talking about the issue of grace. Don't forget, it says, he's teaching you to deny worldly loss. Now, let's hear what the Bible is talking about, what it means by worldly loss. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Anyone that loves the world, the love of God is not in him. You love the world so much. The material things in the world, you love it so much. The, the fashion of the world, you love it so much. You are, in, you are in church, yet you want to dress as the people of the world. I'm sorry to let you know. The rapture will catch you on our ways. The Bible says here, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What do you mean by the world that we are talking about? All of us are in the world, for instance. We have air. We have water. That is not what the Bible is calling the world there. It is actually telling you about the ways of the world. The fashion of the world. The manner of behavior of the world. That is the instruction from the Bible. Don't love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of God is not in him. You cannot qualify for rapture if the love of the Father is not in you. Now he went on in verse 16, he said, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Now don't forget, in that Titus chapter 2, he talks of the lust of the world. Now he says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the crave for material things. You have four cars already. 
and you want to have 20 cars, you cannot qualify for rapture. I'm saying it, it doesn't matter who you are. Because the way God looks at this is not the way man looks at things. How, you alone, how many houses do you want to live in? How many rooms do you want to live in? That is what the Bible is talking about. He said, for all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the crave of the flesh, the crave for material things, the crave of the flesh, crave for sex, crave for alcohol, crave for drugs, the crave of the flesh, the loss of the flesh. In other words, you, the flesh is lusting after this thing. Not until you do it, you are not satisfied. It says, and the loss of the eye. Whatever you see, you can't remove your eye. And it says the pride of life. These three things. These three categories. These three things are the trap between the devil is, the snare of the devil, between the devil is trapping the world. And you tell me, brethren, this is exactly what is happening all over the world. And nobody is talking about rapture. Nobody is warning people about the impending danger. So the Lord says to you, if he gives you grace, the grace is for a reason. Reason for you to be prepared. You sleep in the night. You are prepared. Before you go to bed, rapture may take place. Nobody tells you that uh, a lot of people plan for uh, uh, five years in advance. Some people are even planning for December. Some people are even planning for June. Who told you you will live to see June? Don't let anybody deceive you, brethren. It is true. We are praying for long life. It is true. But I tell you the truth. God is the owner of souls. He can call for the soul anytime. Now, let me tell you the two dimension of rapture now. Because this is the foundation. You sleep. And you don't wake up the following day. Your own rapture has taken place. When you sleep and you cross to the other side, your rapture has taken place. Although that is not what the Bible teaches. But I'm just telling you, you can also take that as your own rapture. Because you're already cut up away from this world. That is why when you go to bed, before you go to bed, you must sanitize your heart. You must cleanse yourself with the blood of Jesus. I'm going to share some of the secret the Lord told me that will qualify you. Make sure you are part of this video but part of this broadcast throughout this week I'll begin to teach you the things you need to know the things you need to do the things you have to do if you want to qualify for rapture for instance you want to go to bed don't ever go to bed carelessly any longer I'm telling you by the grace of God what he has taught me you don't just hit your bed like that no, you must close your account for the day and how do you close your account? You ponder over your activity today and ask the Father in His mercy to forgive you. Some people even teach us. They also teach in places. They tell you that once you are born again, you are born again forever. It's a lie. There is nothing like that in the Bible. <laughs> the, oh my God. The book that God keeps in heaven is not the book of your church. It's the book of God. And it is God that knows whose name stays in that book and whose name removes from that name, from that book. It, you, by your title, you are not qualified. Your title will not qualify you inside that book. How many years you think you have been born again will not qualify your name to remain in that book? How many help you have done to the people around the world will not qualify your name to remain in that book? So you see, you must be able to work out your own salvation with fear. And with trembling. How, how? How do you do that? I just told you now. Before you go to bed every day. Ponder upon your path. Ponder upon. Don't be careless. That is what we read in that Titus. Is the grace of God teach you to be sober. When a person, an alcohol, an alcoholic, takes alcohol. And the hangover is passed. They said the guy is sober or a drug addict. 
soberness will reflect in your character, your conduct. That is exactly what the Bible is talking about. You are sober. You are thoughtful. You are grave. You are deep in your pondering. You are not caught on a wheel. You may be sitting with people, but your spiritual antenna is up. This is what the Lord is teaching. And I'm encouraging you, keep with me. Tomorrow, I'm still going to come your way. I just want to make this video as short as possible, not exceeding one hour. In order for you, you can sit and watch it again and again. This is the message the world needs. Please, share this video and let as many people as uh, 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 those people who wants to who wants to keep themselves fit for the second coming of Jesus so that they will be blessed with this video. The other night I was sleeping and the Lord just said to me, sin virus versus COVID virus. <laughs> sin virus versus COVID virus. Which one is more deadly? Which one are people paying attention to? Jesus said, don't fear man that can kill you. And that is him. That they, there's nothing he can do. He said, but fear that person that can kill you. And after killing you, he will send your soul to hell. You agree with me? Which one is more? The same virus that have destroyed a lot of people and have sent them to eternal damnation? To hell, to Hades, and maybe by the way, let me just share this with you. There is difference between hell. I will, by the grace of God, right this week I'm going to share that also, because the last day of this teaching, I'm going to let you know what the hand of everyone that never gave his life to Jesus Christ truly. Not that you are born, you are in the church, you are born in the church, and because of that, you think you are born again. Your name is written in the book of life. It's a lie. If you have not come to the place of forgiveness, the place of repentance, I mean genuine repentance, you are not born again. Respiratory organ, shut down. But sin will shut down the whole of your life and the whole of your eternity. COVID will only shut down your respiratory organ and the person dies temporarily. But sin will shut the whole of your eternity down. And there will never be a time, if there will never be the opportunity for you to see your God, your maker, your creator any longer. So will you be careless to just pay attention to mundane things? Why I accept the fact that it is important for you to take care of, of your hygiene, to take care of yourself and all the stuff. It is more important for you to take care of your spirit man. Because you are a spirit being. God can kill the body. Send the soul to hell. COVID cannot do that. COVID-19 cannot do that. When a man dies, if he doesn't give his life to Jesus when he's alive, when he closes his eyes, he opens his eye in another horrible place. And that is eternal hell fire. That is a temporary place. I'm praying that you that is watching me, you will be prepared at all times. You will not be caught unaware. You will not be stripped naked. Because when the rapture takes place and a man is not prepared, the pandemonium that will take over, <laughs> the crisis that will take over, the world has never seen it before. What we are witnessing is still it is still on the moon. You sit at home, you still have food in your refrigerator, you still have this, you can still go out, you can still stroll. No, when rapture takes, after the rapture, you can't do all those things again. You, you will come under one government, of the, under one world government. The Bible teaches all the sins. You will not be able to buy. You will not be able to sell. You will not be able to visit. Everything shut down. Because you got to have the mark of the beast. Without the mark of the beast, no activity. And some people say the mark of the beast is already available now. 
Some people even did a calculation. They said COVID-19 is like the mark of the beast because when it infects people, it's just spreading, 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 and it's destructive. God allowed it because God is giving the world a warning. He's giving the whole human race a warning. I want you to continue to pray for your families. I want you to begin to prepare for you. You just said prepare by yourself, for yourself. Wash yourself in the blood at all times. Let me give you this last scripture from the book of Revelation chapter 3. Tomorrow, I'll begin to unveil to you right from the Bible also. Now, of course, we'll still go back to that Matthew chapter 24 tomorrow also. But hear what the Bible says concerning some people in the world. Revelation chapter 3 and from verse 17. Because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Is that not a, not a position of the world? Some governments of the world they pride themselves because of their it, because of their what they said their economy is the largest in the world. The Bible says here, because thou sayest I'm rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. No, you still need something. You still need God. <laughs> you still need God. You still need God. The world need God. The world need God. And that is the message that is coming your way. Nations of the world, please rise up. You need God even at this hour. Human science have failed them. Human ability has failed them. It is to let you know that you need God. And it is a warning, a warning for the rapture. Every day of my life, I say it, Father, Make me ready at all times. After preaching, that you preach, that you cast out devil, that you heal the sick, it's not a guarantee that you will go to heaven. Do you know the way some people behave now? They behave as if they are already, they are already in heaven. That their mansion is already shown to them already. And that is why they are so loose in their behavior. As if they and God they are in the same class. It's a lie. You are still human, and human will be human. Man will be man forever, and God will remain God. I say to God all the time, Father, please keep me, keep me awake at all times. Make me vigilant that when the rapture takes place, that I will not be found wanted. Apostle Paul says, after preaching and preaching to others, he himself does not want to be a cast away. That must be your own prayer also. It doesn't matter your activity in the church. It doesn't matter how many departments you belong to in the church. If you are not prepared for rapture, rapture takes place, you are left behind. It doesn't matter you speak in tongues. It doesn't matter you can cast out the devil. If you are not conscious, some people say, why are you always teaching about consciousness of the devil, consciousness of demon, consciousness of sin? Why will you not be? I'm asking, why will you not be? How will you fight your enemy if you don't know how to be conscious, if you are not alive? In fact, Jesus Christ says, watch. You watch before you pray. It is in the watching that you know the wise, the tricks of the devil. And that is what we are bringing your way. Please, this is not to instill fear in you. Of course, if it is, to, if it is the godly fear, that is good. But this is to make you to be on your toes at all times. You are walking on the street. You are pondering about rapture in your heart. Two days ago, I was sharing with my family. I said, how wonderful is going to be the day of rapture. When the trumpet will sound. And the saint will be taken up. I told my children, my righteousness will not save them. Everybody will have to work on their own. If you know you have problem with your character, with your temper, you better work on it. Because the Bible says, no unrighteous thing will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And God is too smart to allow iniquity in heaven. He allowed devil the other time. 
and God had to drive him out. God will never allow anything evil again in heaven. And that is why I'm warning you and I'm instructing you and also encouraging you to keep fit for the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that none of us will miss it in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, wherever you are, I'm praying the word of God over your life that my God will keep you. My God will keep you. will make you to be sober. You will deny ungodliness. You will deny worldly lust. You will live a life that glorify God in holiness, in righteousness all the days of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the peace of God keep your heart during this trying moment. I pray that you, your, that the comfort of the Holy Ghost will embrace you. I pray that the glory of God will shine upon your, your life and your loved ones also, wherever they are. You might not have got in touch with them, but wherever they are, I'm praying and I'm sending the hand of my Father that the hand of God will embrace them in the name of Jesus Christ. I appreciate your time. I thank you so very much for coming online with me. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, from 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to come your way again in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and God keep you away from evil. God keep you away from coronavirus. God keep you away from every form of sicknesses and diseases. God, God keep you strong in your body, in your spirit, and in your soul in the name of Jesus. Now, before we round up, I just want us to do this spiritual exercise. The Lord taught me this and I think it's very, very important. What is the spiritual exercise? You need to sanitize your soul at all times because your soul is a seat where the devil sits to introduce every form of immorality and sin. When your soul is cleansed by the blood of Jesus at all times, you will do excellently beautiful. So at this moment, begin to release the blood of Jesus Christ upon your heart. Begin to cleanse yourself. Begin to cleanse your heart with the blood of Jesus Christ. Release the blood of Jesus Christ upon your heart. Release the blood of Jesus upon your soul. Release the blood of Jesus upon your body. That your body, your soul, your spirit is not a dumping ground for the devil. For iniquity. For the breeding of iniquity. For the breeding of sin. Of whatever kind. Tell the Lord Father, I'm washed with the blood of Jesus. I'm washed in the name of Jesus. Demonic attack will not come upon my heart. Demonic attack will not come upon my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Son of the living God. We give you all the glory. I encourage you wherever you are, you have your liquid fire with you. It is important for you to engage it at all times. Liquid fire. You have it with you. Take a shot every day. Take a shot every day. Anoint yourself with it every day. Every sons and daughters of GKC, wherever you are watching from, this, this, this is a message the Lord has given unto us. It will keep you away from evil. It will keep you away from fear. Do you understand? You have your mantle wherever you are going. Go with it. And the peace of God will keep you away from evil in the name of Jesus. God bless you. See you tomorrow, 3 o'clock, uh, United Arab Emirates time. Amen.